I've recently been doing quite a number of videos on medium format cameras and today I'm doing one of the most iconic cameras ever and it's the Rolleiflex and it's a Rolleiflex I think from about 1967 it's a 3.5 Tessa lens let's have a look at it now first of all how to get the Rolleiflex out of the case it has a side part here I'm going to take off and the straps have a little button that I don't need to press the straps have a little button on the side here and if I take that off it will release the edge of the camera and the other side as well and I carefully take the camera out and this is a Rolleiflex that is such a quality camera Rolleiflex started in about I think it's 28 and they produced what is now referred to as the old standard Rolly and then the new standard just after the war and the thing about Rolleiflex is, is you have these twin lenses you have a lens which is a seeing a viewing lens and a lens which is a taking lens and you have this viewfinder here that you look down and you focus until you you have a very clear viewfinder um, and you have your aperture and shutter speed very easily to use so you focus here aperture on the side and we have this wonderful display at the top go backwards a little bit to load the camera to load the camera you move this lever to the arrow which moves this front part which then enables you to open the camera load a film the film goes in the bottom here must it must go under this lever here if it doesn't go under the counter won't work and then it goes over the top here and onto the spool here as I said really important that it goes under this part here you have it on the start line at the bottom you then wind on until you get to number one and then the beaver must be in here to operate and then the shutter will be shut will be set as I said the aperture and the shutter speed are at the top this model um, has a light meter the light meters came on a little bit later um, the early um, early ones didn't have a light meter by the 60s a light meter was getting quite common um, these were always quality cameras these were always expensive cameras and the Rolleiflex flats later introduced something called the um, Rolleiflex flats t and you can tell the t because the shutter is in a different place right this is uh, your um, standard good Rolleiflex. flats the t the t was a slightly cheaper model but still a very good camera and they still get good prices now now the only thing that I find slightly strains on this wonderful camera is the exposure system focus is, is simple the meter is what in one sense really good the meter is here and we just adjust it until the needle matches and what that then does is it produces a aperture of value right and this aperture of value is a sort of combination of um, it was a very popular system in the early 50s and 60s and I think it was slightly I might be wrong on this and I'm sure someone will tell me I think it was actually um, promoted very much by Rolleiflex so so if I've got um, so I've set the if I'm at one two fifth of a second and I'm at 5.8 that gives me the value of 12 right now 
if I was to move the aperture to f8, that then gives me a value of 13, right? And if I move it to 11, that then gives me a aperture a value of 14. So basically, every time I move up the aperture, I'm decreasing the exposure, right? by one value okay and that works the other way obviously if i moved the um, shutter speed it would then have the same effect okay so the meter will tell me the exposure value and then i set the exposure value there okay just to repeat that the exposure value is given here and then i set the exposure value there by the combination of my aperture and by the combination of my aperture and shutter speed now it all sounds very complicated and it's not there's a couple of really good videos online and the easiest way is if you start using the um, aperture value system, you find that it is more straightforward than you think. It's a, um, it's one of those things that can sound so complicated, and I apologise if I have made it sound complicated. But basically, the meter on this camera works extremely well. You've got this bayonet here for putting on filters and for putting on the caps. Um, you've got a flash here. Um, on this model you would have a bracket to put a flash on there's so many things to like about this camera the quality of portraits produced are fantastic so many of our iconic photographers as bailey cotty um not cotty brushman he used to like her of course um but um cecil beaton david bailey so many people used the roller flats it was the sort of bread of the mill camera did have some disadvantages which is why the single lens reflex did overtake it in many aspects particularly the press um, it, this wasn't a very flexible camera um, as I said I think it's fantastic for portraits I quite like it for landscapes actually they did do a telephoto version which had a telephoto lens on it um, and you have got of course the sports finder here that you can put this mirror up here and put the sports finder up here of course the value of them now is quite um, high and the, some of the ebay prices are quite high and i would add this is not my personal camera i've been um lent this um, but let's see how i got on when i actually used it nice bright afternoon and you can see how sharp this camera is good tones i mean everything is just right with this camera it has a really nice filter it is so easy to focus it is so easy to handle something that did catch me slightly off by surprise was how quiet the shutter is and you can see why news paper photog press photographers like this camera so much because um I, I, you aren't having, having the camera pressed against your face um, and when you take a photo it is just so quiet and it's quite light um, it's as you can see here the range of tones is fantastic the sharpness is really good um, here I think I did um, open up my aperture a bit um, and the detail on William Barnes the statue here is encouraging and and you look at these images and i think it's not just because you can obviously see there two and a quarter but the roly definitely has a look it has a charm okay i'm using black and white here and i'm using quite a nice um i'm using um former pan 100 which i think has a slightly retro look to it but it's a uh, as i said I've been wanting to use the Roly Flats for years. I've used Roly Calls, I've used um, Yashikas, I've used Minotas, and in particular I've used Mamiya's. And yes, it's everything it promised to be. And thinking about it, would I buy one? Well, that's a very good question, which I haven't quite got the answer to yet. 
Thanks for watching. Bye for now.